Right, uh, Steinhoff is once again facing the fallout from its accounting scandal. Parliament has ordered the company to name the executives accused of inflating profit as well as asset value. A report by the audit firm PwC names several executives, including former chief executive Marcus Joerster. Those names were not revealed to the public. But Parliament has now stepped in. The executives include Dirk Schreiber, Ben Lachranji and Stienhan Grobela. All right, let me take you live to Parliament now. ENCA's Annika Larsen is with that story. So Steinhoff now ordered to reveal the names of those found to have committed corporate fraud. Uh, Annika, good afternoon. How did this play out today? I think extreme frustration on the behalf of uh, MPs who feel that uh, really not enough has been done by Steinhoff, the NPA, the Hawks, the JSE or any of the other oversight bodies. It's been 16 months since Marcus Joerster uh, walked out of the building, so to speak. The Finance Committee Chair, Yunus Karim, calling him the man who walks around him in his PJs must be put into orange overalls if he's found guilty. And I think it was because of the lack of progress made in the South African uh, law enforcement authorities uh, that pub, uh, Parliament used its muscle and ordered the names of those found to have been in the PWC report uh, as a small group of former Steinhoff executives inflated the profit and asset values. Some of those that assisted were not at Steinhoff. Uh, and those names are um, uh, Sigma Schmidt, uh, Jean-Noël Pasquier, Alan Evans and a Mr. Romano, and those are probably from foreign jurisdictions uh, as they involve bodies from Campion, Talgarth and the TG Group. Uh, they were aiding and abetting, essentially found by PwC, Marcus Joerst, as you mentioned, Siahan Krubler, Dirk Schreiber and Ben Lechranzi. Um, so those uh, men now all named, it's out in the open. 3,000 pages and 4,000 pages of annexures, though, still sitting very tightly in the hands of the Steinhoff director, Louis Dupre. So you reference the fact, to Annika Larson, that there's been a lack of progress as far as the Hawks and the NPA are concerned, particularly when it comes to that uh, uh, very complicated and, and, and complex forensic investigation. But we don't really know why. Why is all of this being stalled? I think I know why. Uh, I think they're completely under-resourced, overwhelmed and unable to deal with such a complex corporate fraud, uh, the biggest that South Africa's ever seen. Uh, the Hawks were really hollowed out in forensic auditors uh, by last year. In fact, I spoke to the last one as he packed up his office. He said uh, under the previous administration he was put in a room and told to, his secretary was taken away, as was his computer, and he was put in a room and told to make a thousand photocopies a day to uh, just undermine him and force him to really leave. So uh, they have no forensic auditors. They are paying uh, for forensic auditing companies about 3,000 rand uh, an hour just to plod through all these state capture and Steinhoff cases. But there's very much perception amongst MPs who've said, let's face it, if Marcus Joerster were black, there would be a major outcry in the NPA uh, and the Hawks would have acted much sooner. Remember that they're dealing with several different jurisdictions. Steinhoff is actually not registered in South Africa. It's registered in in Holland uh, and uh, the Netherlands and Germany, uh, and they have made far more progress in advancing criminal prosecutions. Anna Kalasen in Cape Town, thank you. Coming up, 